you. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 10 games that would have been better off as DLC. You want him dead as much as I do? Yes, but not yet. Not until he's told us the Empire's secrets. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Halo 3 ODST Touch! What are you doing up there? I'm on a rocket! Kill that ray! Calm down, don't break out the pitchforks just yet. Listen, ODST is one of the best games in the Halo franchise, okay? We don't think any differently than you do about the game's quality. The only gripe we have is with the game's length. Most Halo games last about 10 hours, maybe 8 at minimum. ODST lasts barely half that long. It goes by so quickly that we have to wonder why they wasted money printing discs and throwing cases together when they could have just released it as an expansion to Halo 3. It already has the title, Halo 3 ODST. It would have made the same amount of money, right? Doesn't matter. All I care about now is getting my men out of this city. Even you. Virtua Fighter 5 Final Showdown. This may sound new to some of you younger folks out there, but there was a time where fighting games were excessively re-released. Virtua Fighter 5 was one of those games, having two re-releases without much of a difference. With Final Showdown, you got two brand new fighters and a, a bunch of costumes. That was the excuse for trying to triple dip on this game? At least Ultimate Showdown had a good enough reason in that it was VF5 optimized for modern hardware. That was fine, but what was Final Showdown's point? Mario Party, the top 100. By 2017, the Nintendo 3DS already had two Mario Party games, Island Tour, the bad one, and Star Rush, the ginger kid of the franchise. Did we really need a third game? Mario Party The Top 100 was one of the most unnecessary and questionable games Nintendo has ever put out, especially when we got to see which minigames were considered the top 100. Most of the collection was composed of the least enjoyable minigames from the series. What made it more confusing was when Super Mario Party launched roughly a year later for the Nintendo Switch. Dudes, why didn't you just develop this under the new game and sell it to us as an expansion? The 3DS died the second the Switch launched. Why did we need a third Mario Party? Why? Infamous First Light Now, much like Halo 3 ODST, we aren't saying First Light isn't deserving of its roses. Honestly, we could go for a new Infamous game starring Fetch, but couldn't Sony and Sucker Punch have just sold this game as an expansion to Second Son? Just about all of the assets of that game are reused for First Light anyways. Plus, it could have been a good way to further sell folks on the possibilities of games getting consistently built upon after launch a lot sooner than it wound up taking. At least Sucker Punch said they had fun developing the game, so more power to them. And now I'm the truck. Cover me while I run. No, stay cool. I'll clear the road. Crash Team Rumble. Your team boosted. Funny thing about Crash Team Rumble is that it was originally planned to be a component of 2020's Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time. And honestly, it should have stayed that way or just got cancelled. Instead, it spent nearly three years longer in the oven, only to come out half-baked. We'll need a hell of for that one. A small roster of characters and almost every cosmetic locked behind a grindy progression system? 
that's not worth 30 bucks, especially when the game is so unbalanced. Six months of post-launch support included? Nah, not even worth 20. It really should have just been shoved into Crash 4 with bonus characters as DLC. We could have gotten a new Spyro game by now, guys. Come on. Victory! Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 Given how great The Force Unleashed was, truly, that it's one of the best Star Wars games you could ever play. We were psyched to hear we were getting a sequel. And guys, it was such a disappointment. The Force Unleashed 2 was roughly half the length of the first game, with a rushed story that made very little sense in the end. Sure, it had a couple of cool moments, but the wait was not worth it. It may as well have been an expansion for the first game cut down to maybe an hour in length and regarded as a side story. Oh well, past is the past, Force Unleashed is dead, we're never getting a third game, all because 2 just went and messed everything up. Find the last of the rebels and destroy them. As you wish. Dead or Alive 5, last round. Much like Virtual Fighter 5, Dead or Alive 5 got excessive with re-releases too, but a little bit worse. The base game launched in 2012, a year before the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One launched. Then, you had a second revision, Dead or Alive 5 Plus, that was made for PlayStation Vita a few months later in March 2013, and it just featured better training options. Then you had Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate on console a few months after that, and that added five characters on top of the training features the Vita had. And two years after that, we finally get around to Dead or Alive 5 Last Round, which would have one new character, and then two DLC characters, and then get a plethora of post-launch support through costumes. And that was pretty much it. Koei Tecmo. My guys. My dudes. My homies. Why didn't you just make one launch on PS4 and Xbox One, and then make those eight characters all DLC? Why did we need four releases of the same exact game. What was the point? Assassin's Creed Mirage. Stop now! Powering the alarm! The story of Assassin's Creed Mirage is similar to Crash Team Rumble. What was originally planned to be DLC for a pre-existing game apparently got too big and supposedly warranted its own game. Thing is that the world of Mirage doesn't feel big enough for that excuse. Hey, what's going uh, on? Being a watchman. Never uh, really your calling. <laughs> the skill trees and equipment upgrades felt bare bones and combat felt like a joke most of the time. Failing stealth just rarely ever seemed like a punishment, so why couldn't this have been an expansion for Valhalla? Every Call of Duty! This conversation comes up nearly every year. Why doesn't Call of Duty just stick to one game and update every year? It makes total sense, too. Rather than keep making new SKUs of games that increase to absurd file sizes every year and constantly keep printing out discs and cases, Activision could just cycle campaigns and maps in and out once every so often. I need you to level that building. How copy over? Solid copy, you want. Rolling it down. There's just one problem. Money. Call of Duty rakes in billions and billions of dollars every year. Part of this is because there are people out there, believe it or not, who only buy consoles just to play Call of Duty and only Call of Duty, and they and their friends are going to buy every Call of Duty every year. So you think Activision is really going to turn down that money? Just about every sports game in existence. 
Very excited to see how this player fares today. Well, I like the look of the line here. This should find the fairway. Really, the amount of money going in and out of sports games is ridiculous for what little work is actually done on them compared to the majority of the gaming industry. What is your 60 and 70 bucks going towards when you buy one of these? Not much. Next year's game of Madden, NBA, or PGA Tour will go through a small roster change, maybe have a new story for the season and career mode, but what some have found in their favorite sports games is that in reality, almost every single game is just a recycled version of last year's game. If roster updates are really the biggest changes across all of these games, why aren't we just getting yearly updates? Oh yeah, it's for the same reason why we keep getting annual Call of Duty games. Money. But which game do you feel could have been DLC instead of a full game? Let us know down in the comments and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day. No, I don't know what it was, but it was gonna grease your ass good. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.